Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of Among the Stars Celebrity Perfume Reviews. Today, I'm extremely happy to bring you guys my personal review of Britney Spears' 28th Fragrance Glitter Fantasy. This fragrance was released at the end of 2019 to some countries. Um, I don't believe it's actually getting a full U.S. launch, but you can find it on eBay and other like third-party sellers from people who have gotten their hands on it through whatever sources that people magically get things their hands on. So, the box looks like this this time. And it has the same uh, front that the original Fantasy had, where you had that kind of triangle going up the front. And then you've got, uh, it's got two reflective, like, fuchsia colors. Um, and then the center is all, like, actual, like, textured glitter with the word Glitter Fantasy kind of cut out. Um, and it's similar to the colors on the sides. Both sides have glitter along with the top, and it's all textured. And then the back just has a promotional picture of the bottle. We don't have, like, an ad for Britney on the back this time, which I find a little weird. But it is what it is. The bottle looks like this, and the bottle itself, so, like, in photographs and everything, looks a little weird. So, when I got it in person, I was really, really shocked to see the way that it is. Because the bottle itself is pink, like, and then they sprayed silver glitter over it. But the glitter isn't super opaque so you can still see through it which i thought like the bottle wasn't see-through initially when i first saw pictures of it i thought it was gonna be like like deep deep glitter kind of like these are so that's really interesting but this one is kind of a different fantasy from what we had but you know previously with britney's line britney normally is pretty good about giving us kind of different interpretations of um fantasies but they're not like your traditional uh flanker where like, most flankers, when you go, like, into, like, you think, like, um, Marc Jacobs, Mugler, things like that, you go into your more designer brands, flankers generally are very similar to the original, like, original fragrance itself, um, and then they just change a few notes and they make it a little bit different, is when, yeah, like, celebrity fragrance, where, like, the original fantasy to midnight fantasy, hidden fantasy, circus fantasy, they're all very, very different. You wouldn't necessarily know that they're flankers of the original fragrance because they don't smell like it. But then, you know, we got Intimate Fantasy, which, trying to do this in reverse is terrible. Um, Fantasy Intimate Edition, where it was kind of that original fantasy, but kind of turned on its head. And that's what they did with Glitter Fantasy. Glitter Fantasy reminds me a lot of the original fantasy, but kind of a new interpretation of it, a new school version of it. Like, if someone had never smelled fantasy, they wouldn't be able to tell you, like, oh, I've, like, I smelled that before. But if you compared it next to the original fantasy, they'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, I see. Like, those are very similar. But on its own, this is a very standalone fragrance. But that being said, to me, it does have similarities to the original fantasy. So, notes for this one are crystallized red berries and red plum. Middle notes are sparkling pink fluffy violet accord, twinkling lotus blossoms, and br brilliant heliotrope. Alluring musk, mysterious argan wood, and benzoid are in the dry down. So, right off the bat, heliotrope has a scent of, like, kind of like vanilla. So that's where you get, like, that vanilla cupcake vibe from the original fantasy. But this is a really, really sweet, fruity, fresh version of the original fantasy. It doesn't have any of that kind of, like, heavy or tartness that the original fantasy has. This is kind of, like, the bright, springy, fun version of fantasy. Not heavy at all. Very daytime. Could be worn all year round. Um, very, very fruity. Very tart from the fruits, but not tart like how the original kiwi is in the original fantasy. That being said, this is an eau de toilette. Um, it lasts ridiculous for being an eau de toilette. I will be completely honest with you. Um, I wore this to work yesterday. I sprayed it on about noon and could still smell it on my wrist at 6 o'clock at night. Could still smell it on my wrist at 8 o'clock at night. And then I kind of forgot about it and I was like, you know, whatever. And then I went to go to bed and it was probably, you know, like 1 in the morning. So it had been at least 13 hours since I had wore it. Getting ready to hop in the shower and I was like, oh yeah, I, I, I wore Glitter Fantasy today. I wonder what that smells like. So I smelled my wrist and I could still faintly smell it 13 hours later. Like there's some fragrances in my collection or what I've worn that you can't smell them at all. And this like, although it was very, very like I had to get my skin, like my nose to my skin to smell it, you could still smell it. There was definitely a, yeah, that's Glitter Fantasy. I can smell that in comparison to like, the other part of my wrist where I hadn't sprayed anything. So, even though it is in a toilet, it does last a really, really long time. So, that being said, 
This is probably one of my favorite interpretations of the original fantasy. My husband wears the original fantasy, and because of that, I find it hard personally to wear the original fantasy, just because, to me, that's his scent. So this is a really, really nice version of it, because it is kind of more tropical, it is more fruity, it is more fresh, and those are the type of fragrances I steer toward anyway. Like, those are what I personally love. This is very well done. Um, I do wish it was an eau de parfum, just because... I'm a queen like that, and I wish it was an eau, de, an eau de parfum, but this lasts so long. It is amazing. If I can grab another tester card, I'm going to spray it again. This, it's just, when it first opens, you get a really, like, a blast of the berries. You get, a, like, a little bit of that plum, giving it kind of, like, that little darkness that the original fantasy had. Like, it's very reminiscent of the original fantasy, but it plays calls at it in a very different way. Um, it's not something that's going to be super dark and, like, deep. Like, not saying that the original fantasy is super dark and deep, but when you compare them, this is definitely the darker, deeper version of them. Um, you immediately get some of those warm florals, like the heliotrope definitely does come out. And it's got argonwood in the base, so that's definitely something weird for a Britney Spears fragrance, and definitely not your typical, like, sweet note, which does give it kind of that warm, ambery, kind of cupcake-y deep vibe because it is kind of a form of oud so like it's a very interesting note to be in fantasy so it does kind of round down the fragrance but that being said it is pretty linear like it doesn't change a whole whole lot it just kind of gets a little warmer as you wear it and a little less tart but still stays very fresh and very fruity and very fun throughout the whole fragrance um i don't think this particularly goes toward a particular season it would be kind of springy if you would put it in a season but definitely something you could wear all year round and definitely could be someone's signature scent if they were you know loving of the original fantasy and they kind of want to revisit that um in a different way this would be a very fun way to do that so there you guys go. There is my personal review of Britney Spears' Glitter Fantasy. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Follow me on Twitter, A the S Perfume, and Instagram, Amanda Stars Perfume. Links are in the description below. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Bye. -bye.